Okay, uh, my name's Mark Williams. I'm a regional manager, uh, London and South East for Wessex Archaeology. Um, after a period of being interested in environmental issues, I've, um, I'm also part way through a master's in uh, sustainable development at the University of Sussex. Um, as part of my work at Wessex, I'm also a member of the uh, Sustainability Working Group, and the, the remit of this group is to try and incorporate sustainability into our working practices. Um, there's kind of two components at the moment. The first is kind of an operational side, which every company in the world should be doing at the moment, sort of reducing uh, its carbon footprint, reducing waste. But the second part, what we're trying to do, is look at ways in which archaeology can make a positive contribution to sustainability and sustainability issues. So we're looking at sort of the operational side is mostly is kind of like reducing um, reducing the ne the negative, but we're looking at uh, ways to positively impact as well. So just running through, uh, you'd be kind of um, in sort of business um, sustainability. You, you can, you can kind of see it as a buzzword at the moment. Um, there are lots of acronyms, lots of terms um, used in uh, Western business for sustainability. Um, but it is, um, essentially, there is something like four, uh, $40 trillion of um, assets under management at the moment, which have uh, a sustainability um, governance side to them. Um, and that's a colossal amount of money, and that's likely to increase to something like 80 trillion over the next couple of years. So what does that mean for us? Well, a lot of this finance is what finances the projects we do, whether it's public-private finance or, um, uh, or private, pro uh, private finance. So it, it's becoming incredibly important for, uh, for us. And I think we're, um, in the commercial side, we're seeing a lot more um, sustainability just in terms of tender documentation, um, and at least anecdotally, sustainability is becoming a more important aspect of, um, of that kind of work we do. Um, but that is just the means to an end. What essentially sustainability is about is making sure this sort of thing doesn't get worse. Um, just from the, past, uh, from the past couple of years, um, forest fires in California, child labor, uh, flooding in Somerset, and deforestation in the Amazon. S sustainability is about making sure that we leave a planet in such a way that people in the future can live meaningful lives. So the classic um, definition from Grow Hall and Brundtland, development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So that's really what sustainability is about. The, um, the previous slide is a, a means to an end. Um, now, in 2008, Jeffrey Sachs um, looked at sustainability and said there were two parts to it, an analytic and normative side. The analytic side is that things can be measured um, using scientific and historic analysis so that some activities can be deemed more or less sustainable. The normative side is that we, this then dictates action so that um, a course of action should or should not be undertaken on the basis of whether or not it is or isn't sustainable. I, that's fairly obvious, just taking for an example climate change. We know using analytical data that our overuse of fossil fuels is causing catastrophic climate change. The normative aspect is we should stop using uh, fossil fuels or, at least, uh, or reduce as much as possible. So where does archaeology fit in here? Um, I've taken a bit of a liberty with the definitions, but um, Sustainability, the need to understand interrelationships between people and the environment over time to design a better future. Archaeology, striving to understand these relationships of people and environment to understand the past. I see these, um, these concepts as linked to the sorts of information, the sort of data produced are essentially the same. And to some extent, I, can, I think you can see um, archaeology is almost sustainability projected backwards. Um, so archaeology deals with the interaction of society, culture, and nature over long periods of time. Only, in only very specific aspects will archaeology sort of inform sustainability directly. So I'm not suggesting that excavating a, a Romano British farmstead in Hertfordshire will inform our sustainable working practice, uh, sustainable agricultural, agriculture going forward. But what archaeology can do and do extremely well is to analyse complex data and present it in such a way that it encourages people to understand this complexity which is inherent within sustainability. Um, it can help people understand 
these sort of systems complexities and also importantly the tangible effects our activities have on future generations almost on a daily basis our job is to understand this sort of temporal component how activities and actions inform future generations and in our from archaeological point of view we are that future generation um, this isn't necessarily a new thing. Um, archaeology has made contributions to sustainability-related sustainability um, subjects in the past. Here's just some examples. The Climate Heritage Network um, are doing excellent work trying to bring heritage within the IPCC form, uh, format. Uh, Historic England are uh, uh, an early adopter of um, highlighting this link between climate change and heritage. And some uh, excellent work by Robert van den Orten, the Humber Estuary, um, was very early academic work looking at how um, adaptation to climate change can inform contemporary society. Um, and also, Mola's excellent work on the Citizens Project and SCAPE in Scotland, looking at some of our most vulnerable sites, um, the coastal heritage, um, both uh, not just the impact, of heritage, uh, the impact of climate change on heritage, but also broadening the discussion to people who perhaps wouldn't necessarily engage with climate change using heritage uh, as a format. Um, oh, this slide's gone a little awry. Um, Archaeology for Sustainable Agriculture, that's uh, what that was supposed to say. Um, some research by um, Erica Gutman Bond, this excellent book, if anyone's interested, I would highly recommend it in the UK and um, Chelsea Fisher in the US, looking at actual specific um, uh, archaeological practices and how they can inform um, such, uh, agriculture going forward. Um, so just from the previous two examples, they fit quite neatly into the sustainable development, some of the sustainable development goals that have been brought up a couple of times before. So um, 13 climate action uh, for, uh, and then zero hunger and life on land. Um, both uh, the, the previous examples fit neatly in there. And this is kind of where we first got involved in this aspect. Um, it came from a client asking us how our work could inform the sustainability aspect, uh, aspirations of their project. So what we did was we thought, well, obviously we're going to try and reduce our carbon footprint, reduce waste. But what we tried to do was think, OK, so let's see if uh, the work we're doing has any direct impact on the sustainability uh, goals and targets. So as you following just a couple of examples. Um, the first, um, we've looked at uh, goal eight, um, promote sustained, inclusive, sustainable economic growth, and target 8.9, uh, sustainable tourism. So it was kind of low hanging fruit. The archeological work would produce artifacts and narratives about the local site and encourage people to go and visit. Um, uh, and, and sort of, um, and so, uh, that was quite important to this project, so it, it did go down well with the clients. And the second one, again, fairly low-hanging fruit. It was a low, um, low-lying area, subject to thousands of years of inundation, through, um, changes from climate, and human adaptation um, in response to that climate change. So what we suggested was actually the project itself could add. First of all, archaeological data, which would um, inform climate change. But more importantly, I think, is we could use the narratives produced about that climate change to inform contemporary groups about climate change and about the issues and the, um, the, the problems that we're facing at the moment. Um, what, we've also, what we're also looking at is sustainability research questions, which can be added to, uh, which can supplement our regular research questions. So, for instance, the last project, how does this site impact on our understanding of adaptation to climate change? Um, it is likely that biodiversity will become the next big issue. I think it, it already is, but I think it's going to become recognised. So uh, another couple of potential questions that could fit into a lot of our regular day-to-day -day projects, such as how does the site contribute to our understanding of the impact of agriculture and biodiversity? How do land use on the site influence biodiversity? Now, th these are just questions that I sort of plucked out. Either they could, any, a lot of our projects can be used to generate information which could inform about sustainability from industrialization, um, agriculture, uh, marine, uh, 
it's not that difficult to draw these questions out. It's just whether we, um, whether we want to do that, essentially. Um, what we're also doing is developing a heritage and sustainability um, education pack. A lot of organizations produce education packs and some excellent ones. All we're doing is reframing it slightly to focus specifically on um, sustainability. So it'll deal with issues of reuse, uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, um, comparing pottery, for instance, to different artifacts, look at um, how certain, uh, certain materials stay within the archaeological record and what those implications are for contemporary society. Using archaeological information and heritage to teach about climate information. Um, now it's turned out to be somewhat prophetic in that uh, the recent announcement of the new Natural History GCSE, uh, it was last week or the week before, I think these sorts of um, our contribution to those sorts of uh, sustainability education is going to become an increasingly important thing. Um, so. Yeah, so that was a quick whistle. So in conclusion, archaeology and sustainability are closely related in the types of information and knowledge required. Um, they both encourage and require an understanding of the re relationships between culture, nature, and change over time. Archaeological narratives can be employed to help people understand sustainability issues in the present. And most importantly, we have a moral obligation to what we can to prevent the worst of our current, currently unsustainable lifestyles. Thank you.